Hello, it's me, Ellie's Music, and I'm back, you know, <laughs> the first time, you know, I'll try to, you know, I'll try to. Anyways, welcome to the season premiere second of my, you guessed it, religious life video blog, and I know anyone to be civilized says, Ellie's Music, why do you always try? Why is that one? My God, David Vane, you try to, you guessed it. Do political life video blog, and so is all all that. Could you do something else? No, no, no. Listen, I can do my political life video. My political life video blog goes all the way to my final thoughts video blog, and I can do this. I did this three years. This is my fourth year, and I'm and I'm not gonna take no for answers. I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep on going. So there. Trust me. Yeah, life is too short, you know it's all that. And, uh, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, um, let's, let's, let me try this one for you, you know it's all that. But anyways, Thank you. trust me about this, for as far as we're concerned. There's, uh, this is what it says, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, Let's get started, yes, yeah, with Matthew chapter twenty chapter six verse verse nineteen through twenty four. It says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break and break in and steal. But store up for yourselves yourselves. Treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust, and can, it consumes, and where thieves do not break in, to break in and steal. For where where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So your heart is on you get the Labor Day weekend, and you might think it's so smart about wondering why the priest has to take an interest in this, since Labor Day is a secular holiday. But Labor Day has something to do for something to do with plenty plentiness of you get to do to do faithfulness and holiness. That's why the us Episcopalians knows the Episcopal Church book Church's Book of Common Prayer has been a, you get to, has been a, a prayer appointed for Labor Day. And that is all I can say. And you know, you could be, you know what I'm talking about. But back to the drawing board of things. But Labor Day is to be treasures in heaven. And that is the, that is why, not, that's why we have to, you guess it, you know, not only are we asked to God, to ask God for our daily provisions. And and we also are warning about the stock stockpiling material, wealth, and other treasures on earth. Because you have to you have to do not store treasure store up treasure up store up for yourself treasures in heaven. And that's why where moth and rust consume and these were yeah break in. And, and steal, but store up your treasures for yourself in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves don't break in and steal. That's what Matthew chapter 6 says. That's why treasures in heaven is not a beverage reference to a kindly thought in God's heart. Heart of such some such latitude. And God's kingdom is ultimately rule on earth. Treasures in heaven are um these of these things in of worth in God's coming kingdom, such as justice, opportunity for everyone to be productive. Provision for 
everyone needs and respect for uh, the dignity of every person. And the implication is that we would do best, do best to invest definitely in our money and the activities that transforms the world. Then in um in a security that tries to protect our humanity to that for for the church. But the only thing that that has something to do with uh, about treasures in heaven is on verse twenty two says that um you guess it says the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? You know, and that is why, you know, it is wrong then uh, to have retirement uh, portfolio or even to care about about the material things of of this world for ourselves or or for others. Answer, the answer is again both no and yes. And the no comes from the fact that this passage is not the only one in the Bible speaking to questions of wealth provision and for those who are dependent on us, other passage counsel, prudence and forethought, such as those who gather little by little will increase. Quote this from Proverbs chapter 13, and that is 13, the verse, verses uh, 11 and 22, that the good leave and inherit his to their children's children. And that's why, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. And in Genesis 44, set, chapter 44 says, God guides. Joseph to store up food for seven years in advance of a famine. And Jesus speaking favorably in the parable of the talents. That's what Matthew chapter 25 says. That's it. And it will be, yes, will be discussed later. Try to invest some money and in light of the scripture of scripture this one and in, that's why Matthew chapter 6 cannot be a blanket prohibited but yeah this is what happens on verse 24 where your treasure is say your heart also but the only way that these actual words is to be so profound and money ch- changes in the heart of more than you guessed it the heart decides to how to have money, money. If Jesus' point is not you tend to put your money into things that matters to you. But the possessions will only change that you can more that you care more about the the other things carefully. What you own for you will be invitably begin to value and protect the potential the treatment of everything else and that's why we may call this the treasure principle namely that treasures transform transform those who invest in their deepest treasures in the things of this world you know I'm talking about this world you know chapter uh, chapter 24 and it says that um, 
that no one cannot serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one who and despite the others. You cannot serve God and wealth. And um, that is that is why it happens to this conclusion that uh, the uh, to lead anxiety, um, she is going to become uncertainty of money. Will it be eroded by inflation? Uh, inflation. Will the stock market be crashed? Will the bonds be default and the bank will fail? Can I be sure about this one? What if it? What if I told you that I've been that I've saved enough money inside my pocket in my wallet to get something to eat, have pepper jacks, or stuck in donuts, or whatever it happens? But the antidote is this: is to invest in the in the ways that meet meeting people that people genuinely need. And as a company that provides clean water or well-made clothes may be invested inside the kingdom of God, whereas an investment tries to depend on politically motivated subsides, besides overheating housing markets and other material shortages, sources that may not. And this passage from Matthew chapter 6 is not to be ruled by portfolio management, but it tells us that our commitment to the ways and means of God's kingdom extends to how we manage such wealth as we have. I'm going to wrap The question is this. What kind of attention you should pay to material needs and accumulation of resources? If so, you must pay you must must pay extensive attention. You are foolish if you let them displace your trust in God on Labor Day weekend, and you are. You, you, are, you are becoming unfaithful. If you pay excessively attention to them, you will become greedy. By liberty, liberty, you feel sure it says, don't be greedy. Just stop it. Stop being greedy. Just share it for themselves. If you acquire the expense of the other people, you're, you're yes, yeah, you're, you are becoming the kind of a, a person. person against whom God's kingdom is pitched. So how are we discerning the lines between appropriate and, and inappropriate decision of to wealth? Here's the thing. Jesus answered this. Answers. And it says that strive first for the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things will be given un- given to you. And first of all, despite our cap- uh, despite our large capacity for self deception, and this question can help us on Labor Day weekend observe carefully where our treasure is has put us. Uh, us. That will yet yeah, for us. And the moral of my yet yeah, season premiere religious life video blog story is this: where your treasure is, that will tell us something about our hearts. It's the known Labor Day because everything else civilized. Pray this prayer with us in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, you have so linked in our lives one 
with another that we all do affect, for good or ill, all others' li- li- lives. So guide us in the work we do, that we may do it not for self alone, but for the common good. Mm-hmm. And as we seek a proper turn for our own labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspiration of other workers and arouse our concern for those who are out of work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, who lives and reigns with you in the you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's a lovely prayer. Is this? Well, who knows? Like I said before, where your treasure is, they, there's your heart also. And that's my uh, political... No, no, no. That's my religious life video blog story for the season wear segment, and I'm sticking to it. We'll be right back with the season premiere segment of hashtag Omaha Choirs only on Facebook Watch at Resurrection at the W here. And wrap these up, things up with my final thoughts. After this, commercial work.